Thank you. So hello, everyone. Good morning and good afternoon to the ones in Europe. My name is Dong Ting, uh, and then I lead the security efforts and compliance at Rescale. So today we're going to be talking about how you can keep your data secure and what things you need to consider to keep your data secure uh, with HPC in the cloud. So before we start, we want to make the proper definitions. What is data security and why do we care? So we treat the data security as the confidentiality and integrity of your data and IP. Specifically, the three items that you most likely want to protect is intellectual property, user data of your own users, and customer data if you're interacting with customer data. Around those data, and there are different actions that can be performed against those data. Incoming actions include importing of data and access of data, and outgoing actions include exporting and processing of those data. The good thing is, or maybe the bad thing, is that all of these data can be quantified to a monetary value. So you do have the proper incentive to protect these data. Now, we decided to make a list of 10 most important things that you want to keep in mind if you want to keep your data secure. This is for both on-premises and in the cloud. So to start, on the bottom, we have physical security. You want to have the proper perimeter security in your data center where your data is stored and computed. You want to have the proper guards, visitor logs, maybe even a very fierce dog if necessary. Otherwise, it's no use if you can have, have everything secure logically if someone can go and pull out your hard drives. Next, we have network security. Within your data center, you want to have proper encryption in transit. You want to do network isolation for different projects, for different workloads. And you want to have firewalls and configure them correctly. Number three, you want to have the proper OS security, operating system security. That includes having the proper image, doing control, version control of those images, making version control of packages, as well as patching and the schedule, regular schedule of patching. One example of OS security uh, and, and why it's, it's very critical is uh, uh, in one of the recent social security number hacks uh, from a credit agency. Uh, the number of, the total number of uh, affected social security numbers, I think, amounted to over 140 million. The root cause of that was because of an outdated package uh, that was used as part of Java. So as you can see, because you have to do maintain your own OS security, you have to think all the way around the, the environment that your code is running and not just the code itself. Now, moving on to number four, application security. So this is uh, what you're trying to use. So this includes the user-facing internal user or contractors or your customers user-facing tools and platform. For HPC specifically, there's a, usually a scheduler for on-premises systems. So you want to consider the security of the scheduler. If, if you have any tools that manage jobs, you want to have the proper security around those uh, management tools. You want to do your own input sanitization for uh, if, you, if you have users of different uh, groups and different projects using the same service. If you have any background services such as billing or uh, um, usage reporting, you want to have uh, proper security around those services as well. Number five, redundancy and backups. So for business continuity reasons, you want to have proper disaster recovery plan and also test them on a regular basis. This also include finding a proper data center uh, that's offsite uh, and also you want to uh, basically do the same thing again on the offsite and then 
to perform the, the proper backups. Number six, file security and integrity. You want to make sure that all of your files, which is actual uh, piece of data that you want to protect, are accessible by only by authorized users, and also that the files cannot be corrupted. One example in the file security integrity is a, a recent uh, WannaCry uh, ransomware, where they would come uh, once you're infected, a lot of your files on your file uh, on your file system will be encrypted. And then you see a message where they say, if you pay a certain number of Bitcoins, they will unencrypt your computer. I think in the end, over 300,000 computers were infected, ranging from individuals to hospitals to critical systems. And this is a failure of the number six file security and integrity. So you want to have the proper mechanisms for the files not to to, to not be able to corrupt, uh, to, to be corrupted, as well as the backups of the files to be to not be cor corrupted. Number seven, you want to have the proper logging and monitoring. Uh, so this includes uh, both low level, such as systems, network connections to more logical ones, such as file access, user actions. Uh, and you want to provide an audit trail for all of these as well as making sure the audit trail cannot be corrupted and are backed up. Number eight, the user security. If you have internal users or any contractors that, that come in and, and use your HPC system, you want to have a system around authentication and authorization of your, of your HPC. Usually you want to do multi-factor authentication. Sometimes you want to do single sign-on for uh, to, so that they can reuse the same credentials from the company. If you manage your own passwords, you also have to consider the whole password complexity and lifecycle, including reset, changing of, of your password, and so on. One of the example here is that uh, in if you move to the cloud directly, a lot of in a lot of the cloud providers, their storage systems have a, a somewhat confusing permission system. So uh, we have heard many stories where even in big companies, uh, all of a sudden people have discovered that one of their uh, storage uh, is uh, is open to the world or it's not properly secured. So. They probably do want to show it only to their own users, but uh, because they have not managed properly their authentication and authorization, this has become possible. Now, number nine, as well as everything that you have below, you need a live security operations team. So this is kind of the day-to-day -day, uh, management of policies translate them into procedures. You also want to care about office security, uh, even Wi-Fi and your employee machines. Uh, if people can access your uh, customer data through cell phones, then you also want to manage those bring your own devices. And lastly, but not least for many of us, uh, compliance. So this includes any regional geographical compliance that you need to meet, any industry, uh, for example, health or defense, and, and also any governmental uh, contractual obligations that you have to meet. The reason compliance is on the top is, is because apart from the, the different uh, legal things that you have to meet, a lot of the compliance pieces are realized through one to nine below. So to break it down, we want to have a way to measure what kind of things, what kind of duties you have when you run on-premises with cloud providers and with Rescale. To do that, we've come up with a, a three color coded system. Hopefully it's, it's gonna be a, very easy to understand. Uh, basically, the division is uh, for red, it means you have to manage yourself. 
the yellow it's a shared responsibility model that means one party does uh, one part of it usually uh, either the enforcement or the configuration and the other party does the other one so we kind of meet halfway through or maybe sometimes it's not halfway and third the green one it means it's already managed for you so to start um, if you were to run an on-premises system for physical security as we said before uh, you're on your own you have to source your own data center you have to make sure that everything around the data center is protected for network security you have to perform your own network install firewall setup configuration and use them correctly if you have any higher higher level requirements such as uh, isolation then you have to make sure that they are done properly as well next operating system security you need a process and tool chain probably to build your own images and maintain the patches on those images <clears throat> number four for application security you want to perform your own software installation that includes the scheduler as well as any commercial software you may use you need to configure them properly not just for performance as well as for security and you need to perform the proper quality assurance testing uh, sometimes it's part of compliance and sometimes it's part of internal work uh, workflows <clears throat> number five you have to perform your own off-site backup you need to monitor those backups that they're successful and you need to do regular testing of those backups number six file security and integrity you have to perform your own access control on those files you have to uh, detect that they they're not corrupted uh, monitor and, and report if anything happens to them and for logging and monitoring uh, you need to define the metrics that you want to log you want to log them store them back back them up monitor if they're not logged and alert if anything happens and for your own users and any users that you permit to access your system you need to implement the authentication authorization and maintain those systems uh, make sure that your users and roles are properly updated and they're correct for security operation you need your own security and i team it teams to define and implement policies and procedures and for compliance you need to define the ones that you want to meet either contractually or because of your security policy uh, you need to perform all the, uh, the actual documentation uh, you need to meet them and track them all the way through now how would this look differently if you were to move to the cloud physical security is probably the best here uh, it's directly performed by the cloud providers they ensure that everything is secured properly so that you don't have to worry about the actual physical security for network security the cloud providers will provide the enforcement mechanisms for firewalls it is up to you to to configure the, the necessary firewalls and access control correctly and to use them correctly operating system security uh, usually cloud providers provide you with known good images golden images uh, you can certainly build your own as well uh, but in both cases you have to perform your own patches for application security um, you need to perform so because this is HPC specific you need to perform your own software installation you need to configure them and test them the cloud provider will not do anything in this case Number five, redundancy and backup. Um, it's it's very good. Uh, you usually the, the backup uh, me mechanism and monitoring and alerting is usually already in place. Uh, you need to configure them correctly. Uh, make sure that you are using backups, uh, that you get notifications for successful and unsuccessful backups, and also you need to perform your own testing of those backups. File security and integrity. Uh, a lot of the if you use cloud, uh, cloud storage then a lot of this uh, is already done you need to define your own policy uh, what kind of uh, level of security and integrity you want to do and you need to uh, implement those policies and monitor them logging monitoring again there are uh, very many uh, 
cloud providers that, that have uh, a whole logging and monitoring framework, uh, but you have to know where you're trying to log and what you want to monitor. Next, user security. <clears throat> the uh, cloud providers usually have a user management uh, along with roles and so on. You have to make sure that they correspond to what you currently have in your in your company. So suppose someone uh, leaves the company, you have to make sure that they're properly reflected in this cloud system. Security operations. Uh, this is one of the strong points for cloud providers. They have uh, world-class security teams that research, enforce, implement new features, and run the whole security operations. Uh, you have to define what you want to achieve and uh, in terms of policies and procedures and reflect them uh, into the cloud providers. For compliance, uh, this is usually a shared effort. So uh, the mechanisms are provided by the cloud providers, uh, but you have to define what you need to meet and actually make sure that you, you're using the correct systems uh, in these uh, cloud providers so that you're, you're in compliance. And thirdly, if you were to move to Rescale, uh, this would actually look even more optimistic. Uh, for physical security, so this will be managed by Rescale and realized by the cloud providers. Uh, for every cloud provider that we would use, we would make sure that their physical security is proper. Uh, we will perform this network security for you as part of the provisioning process of each new cluster. Uh, we would uh, make sure all the, I mean, through an automated fashion, we'll make sure that all the proper uh, firewalls and access control rules are in place and reflect uh, the, the cluster in question. We have our own management of uh, uh, operating systems, uh, software that runs on them, and also the patching schedule of, of that. Instead of a uh, scheduler here, uh, and we actually, I mean, Rescale is the scheduler uh, conceptually, and we also maintain all the software, commercial software that runs on Rescale. So uh, this is one uh, very strong point for Rescale. In, uh, whereas for cloud providers directly, they do not do anything regarding application security. Uh, here, we perform all those ourselves. Uh, we also maintain the proper redundancy and backups. We test them regularly. Uh, we monitor them and make sure that they're all done so you don't have to worry about the uh, backups. As well as for file security, uh, we have our own monitoring mechanism uh, so that once a file is with Rescale, uh, you can be sure that one cry is not going to reach us. We have an extensive uh, uh, logging and monitoring system uh, to make sure that everything's proper. We show the user actions to you uh, for, for the users in your company, but you don't need to see the lower uh, level uh, network and operating system, for example, uh, logs. Uh, and we, instead, we collect all of them and do our own monitoring on those. What you do have to do is to uh, manage your own user security. So we enforce them, but we don't actually know who works for your company. So you have to make sure that all the users in your company are uh, actually uh, who you want to allow access to. Security operations, still, um, you have to define your own policies and procedures, what kind of security posture you want to have. Uh, and, then, and then you can enforce them through Rescale uh, where we will provide uh, mechanisms for it to uh, achieve them. For compliance, uh, we do our best to <clears throat> provide you the different pieces that you need for compliance. There are different platforms, there are different features. We have a lot of knobs, but you have to know which ones that you have to comply with, obviously, uh, and, and how you want to achieve that, and then uh, provide those information to Rescale, and then we can guide you to use the correct platform or the correct setup in order to reach your compliance. Now, if you remove all the words and just look at the colors uh, with red, yellow, and green, you can see that uh, for on-premises, you have to do all the 
work yourself. This is for sure that like, no cloud provider can help you with uh, a purely on-premises system. If you were to move to the uh, cloud providers, their positioning is that they provide a lot of the tools, the mechanisms and enforcement, but you have to know what you need to use, how to use them correctly, and make sure that they're being used correctly. Uh, specifically for any software-related things uh, relating to HPC, cloud providers are unfortunately not going to be very helpful in that, in that front, so you have to uh, still have to configure your own scheduler. If you're going to use a scheduler, you have to uh, maintain your own library of commercial software that you, that you want to use. The good thing, however, is that you don't need to worry about physical security. And then moving on to, on to Rescale, um, you can see that uh, we do seven out of those 10 uh, for you, and then there's only three that you need to do yourself, uh, and, that, and that's mostly to make sure that you're using something correctly and you're uh, conveying the, your, your exact intentions into Risca so that we can help you to enforce them. So the general shift into less things to manage is, is a good thing. Uh, you, can, you can take advantage of uh, economy of scale uh, so that especially with cloud providers, they manage the uh, cloud systems for a lot of people. So they can afford to hire the best security uh, people and, and to have the best security team so that compared to individual companies who uh, individually cannot and does not make business sense to uh, hire the best security teams, the cloud providers are able to do that. So by managing less, you actually achieve a better security posture. And so we actually see this trend or shift uh, in general HPC as you move to the cloud. So logically, as you go from on-premises to cloud providers and then to rescale, with traditional HPC, you're managing the hardware. With cloud providers, you're managing the configuration, which then manages the hardware. With Rescale, you're managing your workflow, your results, which then translates into a set of configurations and then is then um, deployed to the hardware to, uh, to, to, to manage the hardware. So this is general HPC, but it's also true for security. For, for on-premises, you have to manage the hardware uh, yourself. So that comes with a whole stack of 10 things that you have to worry about. For cloud providers, you just need to interface with the configuration, which is a higher level of abstraction. So the space is smaller, but there are fewer things that you can get wrong. And in the configuration, as soon as you configure them correctly, they will ensure that the hardware configuration is correct. With Rescale, the space is even smaller. You interact with the the workflow that you want to interact with, uh, and you deal with the results. And then that will translate to a set of pre-configured configurations, pre-configured by us, and then that will in turn translate to the proper hardware configuration at cloud providers. So by going to the right, uh, you're, you're reducing uh, kind of the space that you can have, and in turn you're reducing uh, you minimize the weakest link so that you're less likely uh, to, to need to worry about security. So uh, by moving to the right, again, uh, all of the, for example, the social security hack, uh, social security number hack uh, that we talked about earlier and also wanna cry, they will not exist uh, in the case of, of rescale. Uh, storage permissions, Again, they would not uh, they would not be a problem with rescale because everything is already pre-configured. So, uh, in conclusion, I, I would argue that, uh, and I hope hopefully I have argued that um, cloud providers provide better security than on-premises, and also rescale taking advantage of the cloud providers uh, can add additional security benefits on top of the cloud providers. So that concludes my talk. Uh, 
I'm going to pass it back to Robert. Uh, I think he will uh, also pass me some questions. Sure. Thank you, Dante. That uh, so that, everyone that wraps up the presentation portion of the webinar.